again, welcome to our show, Diaspora Life Show. Thank you, uh, finally. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have plenty to talk about. Uh, I've known you for a long time. Uh, Very long, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's, uh, we've always wanted to do this, uh, this show about charity. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, happy new year, B. Happy new year. Happy in, new year. In, in Kenya, we call you Beatrice. In yes. the US, they call you Beatrice. Yes. And uh, I, have, I have a lot of names, but I, I respond to any that fits me best. I'm TB. Me, hundreds and thousands of kids call me on TB. Uh, I have a lot, lots of, lots of adopted children that call me Mama B. So I have, I just have a lot of different names. So I respond to any that fits. <laughs> my, my best is Atieno. I know. <laughs> not, not, not. I, have, I have a niece that is named after me. So I have a niece that we are already nicknaming Atieno Junior, AJ. <laughs> is that right? Wow. <laughs> Yeah. So, so be as like I said, uh, happy new year. Uh, happy new year. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 let's 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 begin from last year. Yeah. Uh, that's the the year twenty twenty, and um, yeah. I, I, I I give us uh, your experience. How everybody says twenty twenty has been terrible. How has yeah. been your experience? Me, I, I, have, I have really been uh, focused on staying positive and finding every little positive things in it while it has been terrible. Yeah, it has been really hard. But in the hardship also, there are beautiful things behind, behind it. So, uh, so for me, I've been really just focusing to be, being very intentional to identify the good in the bad, you know. And, uh, and that has kept me going while it has been difficult you know a lot of things that uh, i as a person or as an organization uh, we planned for 2020 did not go the way we planned you know and um all all our activities that we put in place for 2020 we had to really be flexible to adjust and pivot to uh, uh pivot to a place where the direction of the natural nature of what is going on with COVID was taking everybody, you know? And so, uh, so in a nutshell, really, I would say that uh, for me, I would say 2020 has been good for me because uh, I'm alive today in 2021. Um, I, I am very uh, grateful that 2020 was hard, but uh, as an organization, as Maisha, uh, we are still standing. A lot of organizations are shut down. You know, so um, and and we are still standing. We are still serving our children. We have we have uh, downsized in some areas that was not really uh, excelling, uh, and so we put them on hold for um, a little bit. But in other in other ways that we've been uh, what we've been doing, we have been blessed not to close down like a lot of organizations have closed down. Yeah. And you, you've mentioned something that I really wanted us to talk more about today yeah. uh, and that is uh your mission uh to Turkana. Yeah. Uh, uh i will speak about that but before we speak about Turkana, uh yeah. i know you have, like i said i've known you for a long time and yeah. uh, we started with the uh, maisha orphanage and then it yeah. turned into maisha international uh, yeah. and, and, and i'm sure uh, maisha international is, is is uh, directly related to your activities in Trukana. But uh, yeah. uh, uh, before we talk about Trukana, speak briefly about uh, how Maisha is doing, especially the kids in Nyalenda. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you are actually really making me excited because I love, I have so much energy always to talk about Maisha. <laughs> when someone gives you opportunity, I feel like I'm thriving in my world. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Because like it's like literally it, it's this year when we are almost 14 years old as my as an organization um, is when it actually dawned to me, Chris, that I am living my purpose. Like 14 years old, 14 years later, I'm now just realizing like, oh, I'm actually living my purpose. <laughs> this is my purpose. You know? That's right. 
But, uh, but Maisha, you know, started in 2006. My mom was a school teacher and she really just started serving kids in, in my village where I grew up in Kano, in, in her own backyard. And, um, and while she was a school teacher and uh, supplementing the food she had in her own house, this Maisha was not existing yet. My mom was just serving because she's seen as a teacher, she's seen that some kids were really pathetic, you know? Some kids were in real danger in her class. She was a class two teacher. And you know, I've, I've seen some kids really pathetic in class. And so this was a teacher that was carrying along her profession. And when she's out of school, she was serving the community in, in her own little back, backyard that was a madhouse, you know, touch house in the backyard. She was, she was helping children at that time. And so, so in 2006, when my father died, I had been in Oklahoma for almost five years before returning. So, you know, God blessed me to come in this place in 2001, and my dad died in 2006. So I was returning home for the first time in 2006 for my dad's funeral. And so it is then when, when I went to my dad's funeral that I truly went to the village, go, shall go, shall go, you know? <laughs> because, you know, Growing in Kenya, we were always in the in town, you know. So, yeah. like literally at that time when Dad died, now I was going to the Usha go, Usha go, you know, Ile ya Usha go, yeah. Yeah. And so I went home for his funeral, and I, I was being in Oklahoma for a while, and also growing up in Nairobi, you know, from Nairobi I came to Oklahoma, from Kisumu I went to Nairobi, came to Oklahoma. So I feel like my my life personally has been in a course that has been blessed, you know. As, as I grew up. And so going back for the first time in a long time, the village hit me in a wrong way because I did not, the need I seen there was not okay with me. I was like, no, people, these are my people, you know, and, and, and no child has a right to live like this or, you know, and things like that. And so I adapted. At that time, I seen what my mom was doing by herself single-handedly as a teacher doing and i locked arms with her i said that you know i'm gonna go back and i'm going to to help in any way i can because i felt like god blessed me here in oklahoma i just say i'm going to bless i i know you are always doing this i always heard you saying i'm helping these kids but until i seen it in person it hit me you know in, in a different way and so i told my mom i'm going to to help uh, as, as much as I can. At the time, I was a student here in Oklahoma and also working. So, you know, a student and a job. Really, you know the life of the U.S. sometimes when you're starting to create your path. You know, it is, it's hard work. And the so, life of the diaspora, yeah. yeah it's very hard work. We're we are not just picking up some money on top of the tree. <laughs> and so, so in a nutshell, uh, in a nutshell, just when when I say to my mom that I want to do something to help, what can I do to help, you know? And uh, my mom said that, you know, my salary as a teacher is not more than 5,000 Kenya shillings at that time, you know? <laughs> and and um, because after you have deductions and all those kind of things, she was like legitimately in 2006 bringing in about 5,000 shillings, bringing okay. home. 5,000 shillings. So she's like, this is what we have, you know, and, and the little support you send for us from Oklahoma, we, we share with our neighbors and then we help some of the kids. And so that's when God just provoked me that I'm in a platform that it will, will not take away from my life here, you know, will not subtract on what the blessing I've been blessed with here, but I'm in a platform where, where I can give Based on what I was doing, I was a student and I was working in the church, but God still had blessed me that I had extra to share, you know? So, so that was not going to take away from me. It was, you know, me helping my community was not going to take away from me being in the U.S. and the blessings that God was positioning me to. But, um, but in 2008 is when officially in Oklahoma, I, uh, we registered a nonprofit here, and you know uh, very well at the time we registered it as Maisha Orphanage. Yeah. <laughs> and then in Kenya also, we kind of like partnered with my mom and the women group that she was having, and they, they, 
registered Maisha orphans and widows in Kenya. So Maisha orphanage here was really kind of like just a, a fundraising arm for what it was happening uh, to, to Kisumu. And so since 2006, you know, the first two meals, my mom was single-handedly feeding two kids. When I, when I locked up with her, we single-handedly, before Maisha was formed, single-handedly was feeding 22 kids. Me and her, we were single-handedly just from what God has blessed us with was feeding 20, 22 kids. And in 2008, when we launched Maisha, to date, that humble beginning, Chris, has turned to where we are feeding over 2,000 meals each day and, and educating over 1,000 children. And when wow. I say educating, we are, we are supporting kids in colleges in Kenya that have uh, kids that have grown in our program. We are supporting them in colleges. We have, we have hundreds of kids in secondary schools across Kenya. We have other kids in other primary schools in Kenya that we support. And we also have our own school, Maisha Academy, that we have over almost 350 children that are impoverished. So basically it's a charity school. While we, we want partnership with the locals to help chip in in school fees, <laughs> so the school can be self-sustained, but the school is still running as a charity which really is, is dangerous for the situation of the school, but, um, but it is a blessing for the community at this time. Awesome. So be, uh, be in fact, no, uh, 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 even me personally, I feel yeah. so close to Maisha uh, yeah. because uh, uh, that's one of my, uh, every time I talk about charity, yeah. I cite Maisha as one of my, my best uh, examples. Right, but I, I I noticed something. I don't know if it's this is the past one year uh, uh, mm -hmm. that you now have uh, activities in um in 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 Turukana. Uh, can you give us some background about what uh, 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 the change of uh, because no, I know you as uh, the director and you fundraise for Maisha, but then yeah. I've been seeing these pictures, awesome pictures from uh, from Turukana. Uh, what's what's yeah. going on? So, uh, so you know, at Maisha, our biggest pillars are five. We have five biggest pillars. Education, uh -huh. those, those two are the, our biggest, education and health. Empowerment has, uh, is one of our pillars too. Missions, because from where we are here in Oklahoma City, I have brought over a thousand Oklahomans in my village in Kisumu, over a thousand Oklahomans. And then infrastructure. And so with those, our greatest pillar, uh, Maisha has been running in Kisumu since 2008. And in our strategic plan, we always wanted to make sure that our footprint really, uh, really speaks where the hardest needs are across Kenya. And so, so in Kisumu, we serve in my village, and we also serve in Nyalenda slums. And last year, when I came to Kenya, not really last year, in 2019, I went to Kenya, and one of my friends, um, uh, Ron, from, uh, he works for BBC, uh, they were going to Trukana, and uh, we were always friends on social media, and he seen that I was in Kenya, and he said, hey, B, we are going to Trukana, do you want to tag along? This was not even a planned trip in 2019. So I was just going to, with some of my friends, they were going to do work in Trukana, I'm like, hey, I'm here, yeah, I always wanted to see what's like Trukana. Yeah. So when, um, when I went in Trukana, um, like legitimately, I was, my life was really touched and turned upside down you know and because when i went there the greatest need when i seen people were dying of hunger chris like literally people there's this museum that i went and i can send you a, a photo of this museum definitely he passed but um he passed away uh, last year but i went to to, you know, it was just a two-day trip. This was not a mission trip, 2019. I was just a two-day trip. I was going with, uh, with Ron and Faith, you know, with two of my friends. We were just like, oh, we, we can turn along. Yeah. But the need I seen there spoke to my heart. And I seen how we, you know, the service that we are doing in Kisumu, I was like, wow, we are good at Kisumu. Things are great in the village. You know, things are great in the slums. No human should live like what I'm seeing here in, in Trukana. Yeah. And then my worst, the, it, it was really a worst experience for me because my weakest link is I don't like to see people suffer. That's really my weakness. <laughs> 
like truly my weakness. And so we went to this school called Lombolo Primary School, you know, just to visit this school. And Chris, I've never been in Kenya, and the school really, kids are still going to school under a tree, you know? Yeah, yeah they do. They yeah. do. And, and I've never, and uh, so we are here in Trukana, and these kids are, are like, you, you find a family saying, five days I've not ate anything. Yeah. <laughs> five days. Uh, somebody saying, I've not eaten anything. And so it, it provoked my heart. And, and at, at that time, 2019, I left that place feeling very sad in the situation where like, we have abundance, but we can spread it to our fellow brothers and sisters. And if you can hear on my videos or even hear on my photos, I'm saying to the people, these people in Trukana are our brothers and sisters. Exactly. But especially in Lombolo, central Trukana, where Maisha now has its footprint. This place is, like literally, Chris, so abandoned. Very abandoned. And so, so I promised the children that we will be back. We are yeah. going to try food, you know. And this one was, I'm, I'm provoked. I'm here, and I feel like I can take all, everything I have to leave, you know. Yeah. Which just would be a handout. But I was like, you know, we are good. God has blessed us in Kisumu. And what we are doing in Yolanda, God has tremendously blessed us. We can share the little we have with our brothers and sisters. And a revelation came to me uh, that if, if, you are a fa if you are a parent and you have five kids, this is a revelation that kind of kept me going. You are a parent, and let's say you have even three kids, your parents, and you have food on the table. And and it's small food. You are not going to select your kids that you and you, you're not going to eat today. This is the only person eating, right? Yeah. That small food is shared among that table with everybody, that table, no matter how little it is. And so God, like, you know, it's just a revelation came to me, like, I don't need to do anything bigger. We're already doing something. All we have to do is share, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so in 2020, uh, in 2019, we just started to do a feeding program in, in two schools there, Lombolo Primary School and, uh, and Lakochoho Primary School, uh, but more of Lombolo because uh, the other school was getting a little bit of support uh, from other organiza another organization. So we kind of like focused on really putting all our head in, in sharing what we have. You know, think about it. At this time, there's no excess budget to run anything in Trukana. Yeah. So basically, what we had, if we have 10 sacks of maize, we are saying, let's take two to Rukana. You know, let's give two to Lombolo School and we share, eight, we do eight here. So we legitimately just started by sharing what we already had. However little it was, we were sharing with, with our friends in, uh, in Lombolo Primary School. So B, and, uh, uh, before... Uh, at, that time is, at that time is when we realized that really more can be done because when you're there, you just see people walk for five hours to go look for water, five hours still, you okay. know, to go look for water. Uh, and, and, uh, and we, you know, Lombolo Primary School is about three kilometers to Lake Trukana. Lake Trukana is already water that is already handing them if they just drink it like that because of its selling, you know, um, capacity in it. And so we just say, you know, slowly by slowly, we say we can, we can share what we have with, uh, through our feeding program, but let's do a fundraising to put a well so we can start to do a, a little bit of more transformational things there. And, and since 2019 to 2020, when we were drilling that well, we were just legitimately raising money, selling t-shirts, selling, selling whatever we could sell, you know, to raise money that well. And God really blessed us to put that well in the midst of COVID, we went and drilled the well in Trukana. And now the people in that community, they have a well. That is the first well in that community. And I was told by the village uh, elders there that there's about 500 households in that community. And so that well, if you really translate it, they're saying it will serve almost 5,000 families. You know, I don't know the accuracy of those numbers, but that's what they're saying, that there's almost 500 households in that global village community, you know? Wow, wow. So, so B, I've, um, I've, I've run out of time, but before we, we sign off, 
yeah. I, I would like you to do two things. One is uh, to give uh, shout outs to the Oklahoma uh, American community for the support that you, you've had, because I know you've had a lot of support from uh, yes. Oklahoma yeah. City. And then yeah. two, uh, two, speak to uh, the diaspora, Kenyans living abroad, who yeah. always imagine that to give back, you have to have so much. You don't have to have so much. There you go, go. Yeah, you really, uh, and that's one thing that I always really say, I always say this, charity begins back at, back at home. Charity begins at home. And if your home is Kenya, charity begins there. You cannot make a, America a better place if you're not making Kenya a better place because truly charity begins at home. And you do not need a lot of money to do something. When Maisha started, uh, we were running a feeding program with only $50. I was a student and I was working and I'm living here in America. And the excess that I could have was $50 that it was a seed that started to, to be planted. And so people think that you have to have thousands of money to make a difference. You know, intellectual properties, if you have like knowledge, knowledge resources, you can empower, empower people. That doesn't need money, you know. You don't need money to, to share knowledge and empower young people to be better people. You don't need money to do that. Of course, money is needed for other things, but you don't need a lot of money to make a difference. And so I wanna challenge the diaspora. If you have a hard desire to do something, I'm always saying this, start from home. Charity begins at home. That journey makes everything so easy because you rather fail behind your backyard than failing anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so charity begins at home and start by doing that at home. If you don't know where to begin, research and find very accreditable uh, organizations that you can pitch in, sponsor a child to go to school. Because Kenya, we say education is free, but at the end of the day, it is still not very free for very impoverished families. It's not. I am sorry I can be in trouble with the government right now, but the government of Kenya says the education is free. I have over 500 children in primary school in Kisumu that I support. Yeah. That freeness is still not free because to me as an organization, I'm still paying money to these schools yeah. to, to support these kids. So, so as a diaspora and the, all the diasporas that are, are in America or around the world, if you want to do something, I would say find something to, to give back to because in giving you get blessed. Yeah. And, and start from home because charity begins at home. Find that niece of yours you, that is really losing life and don't give up on them. Find that cousin of yours that, that you can empower. Find that person, a random person that you can just say, I'm going to be committed to this kid from this time to college. You know, it don't take a lot of money if you're in diaspora but you have to be intentional with the service. And so, so if anybody in diaspora don't know where to begin, please feel free to give them my phone number or they can find me at maishaproject.org, you know. Um, they can just go there and find me and ask questions. I will really tell you, you don't have even to give to Maisha. We are just, I'm just begging you as a diaspora, do something behind your backyard. And when I say behind your backyard, in the village where you came from, don't forget where you came from. Because people there still need you, you know, as a person, they need you. And, and here in Oklahoma, I really would like to thank also the diaspora Kenyans that are in Oklahoma. Chris, you have come in Oklahoma to support our work. You have traveled and come to Oklahoma to support what we do. You see how Kenyans, even in Oklahoma, I've rallied behind my Asia. Uh, and, you know, I really give a big shout out to Kenyan diasporas that are in Oklahoma because they were the founding members of my Asia in Oklahoma. Because our first fundraising was done at City Church, you remember that? And we raised $119, our first fundraising in 2008. <laughs> $119. I probably did everything. That's what we met. <laughs> we are like, yeah, you can buy three sacks of beans, you know? Yes. But, but, but that humble beginning, and, and some of the Oklahomans have worked with Maisha since that time. They're still tonight, today, as we speak, 2021, January 1st, are still in, investing in Maisha, you know? And, and some, of these, some of these people don't come from Kisumu. They are 
diasporas from Kenya, from all over Kenya, and they are in, investing at Maisha, and we are making a difference, in, not even in their villages, you know, it, it's in the a life of a child. And the biggest thing also I want to say is kind of like just really giving a big shout out to Oklahomans. As I said earlier, you know, today, since 2008, uh, when Maisha was officially formed in Oklahoma, I have literally brought in the connection and investment to Kisumu and in Kenya, basically, because when we bring people or when you invest in Kenya, you are, you are raising the revenue of, of the nation as a whole, you know? Uh, over a thousand people, uh, over a thousand of, of, of Oklahomans have visited Kisumu. You know, that's, that's investment to the city. <laughs> you know? Right. That's, yeah. that's huge, you know? And so, so that's also a really huge shout out. You know, a lot of Oklahomans have invested back in Kenya. Uh, they have never been in Kenya. Thank God to the ones that have been there that have seen it really firsthand. But, you know, a lot of people invest in the work we do. They have never been there. And so think about Kenyans that know where they come from. They can do even much more bigger than even other people that help us and are not even from Kenya. So my challenge is really always for the Kenyans because we can do it. We have the ability to do it. We have the ability to make a change in our country. We have it. Awesome. We have it. And, I, and I challenge everybody, start from your backyard. Awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, B, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, and uh, I, can't, I can't thank you enough uh, that you know we're doing this the first day of the year 2021 and uh, I, 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 I know uh, this is just the it's not it's not the end it's the it's, it's the beginning of uh, many many things uh, what yeah. I, I just want to stress the fact that uh, like you said you started with fifty dollars fifty dollars yeah. has turned into uh -huh. an organization <laughs> that now takes care and feeds over 500 kids. No, over 2,000. Over 2,000. 2,000 kids each day. During school year, that is, we feed over 2,000 kids each day. Which in next week, I'm just going to be like, I'm stressing out right now because my kids are going to go back to school next week and yeah. I am needing to keep feeding them so that they can stay in school. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 overwhelming, but uh, it just it heartens my heart to know that uh, there are still Kenyans living away from home like you, who uh, never forgot where they came from, who never forgot the fact that they are who they are because of uh, where they came from. And uh, uh, I can't thank you enough, viewers. I've been talking to uh, Beatrice uh, uh, Williamson. I call her Tiena. Tiena is my best name. She's I call her my kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, we've walked this journey with her for a long time and it's yeah. always a uh, pleasure uh, speaking with her. Uh, but I think for me, the takeaway today is that uh, uh, for the diaspora as we begin the new year, find something, find, find uh, an organization, find a person, find a purpose to help one person, a group, and don't worry about how much you have. Yeah. It doesn't really count. What counts is uh, uh, what you can start with and uh, uh, your commitment to your cause. Uh, yeah. uh, Beatrice did that. Uh, it's over 15 years now. And the results, as you can see from, uh, the, from our B-roll, uh, they, they, that show. Uh, Beatrice, thank you for starting that program in, uh, in Turkana. Uh, uh, let's come back and talk about that more because uh, yeah. that that's what we call charity. Yeah, and there's something I was going to say to back you up on what you just said uh, on your closing, Chris, that if people are waiting to have all the money in the world to do it, they are part of the puzzle that is still holding the puzzle to be complete. You know, in a puzzle, there's yeah. every, every part has its own section. So if you're still waiting, you're holding the puzzle to be complete, guys. So do something. Let's complete this puzzle of making a change. <laughs> but that's the best place to end. Viewers, uh, thank you very much. This has been uh, the Diaspora Live Show. This show airs live on Standard Digital at uh, 7.45 in uh, East Africa. And that is uh, because of the changes of time. At uh, times in the US, it's uh, uh, 12.45 East Coast time. But 
uh, uh, Beatrice is speaking to us from Oklahoma, which is, is, is that East Central? Central, yes, yeah. Central. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so 12.45, East, East, uh, East Coast time is uh, what time in uh, Central uh, America? Like right now, let's see, uh, what time is it? Right now it's 11.20 oh, a.m. Okay. Awesome. And I love your puppy, by the way. It's oh, thank you. That's funny. <laughs> he just woke up and he was looking for me. He's like, where are you at? <laughs> awesome. This it's so fun. <laughs> the best year ahead. Uh, see you again next time. Viewers, Appreciate that's it. our show today. Uh, uh, my name is Chris Omala. See you again next week.